I finally got around to watching Kalki 2898 AD, and it was... something. Now, this isn't gonna be like my standard reviews. This is more so gonna be a long breakdown and commentary of the film, and my overall problems with it. Obviously, spoilers ahead. First up is the intro that looks like a PS3 cinematic. Like, this looks pretty bad for 2004. This is the kind of stuff that you should probably outsource for if you can't achieve it yourself. Kalki had a 6 billion rupee budget, which translates roughly to 71 million dollars US, which is a decent sized budget. But apparently this is the biggest budget Indian film to date. Watching it, you wouldn't really be able to tell that though. In the beginning, we are introduced to Ashwatama, who I will be referring to as Ash throughout the review. They did this really bad de-aging CGI face on the actor, which gave him a really creepy looking doll-like eyes. It's giving Uncanny Valley. I don't know why they tried to recreate the actor younger, but in full CGI, it just looks horrible. This movie also expects you to know everything about the Hindu culture, so it doesn't really do a good job at explaining anything for the people who are not familiar with these stories, which doesn't help viewers who are outside of India. After the intro, we see time pass in this cartoon that is animated in this long scene which is decent looking but it's just an odd addition to this film which then cuts to a whole 6,000 years later and you can definitely tell that this movie is heavily inspired by Star Wars, Dune, and Mad Max. We get an introduction to an old man who carries around a gem that was in Ash's head in the beginning. Apparently it lights up near pregnant women's belly if she's carrying their reborn god. The kid in the beginning repeating I did over and over again was so annoying. I will say I do find it interesting with the context of the story that Rhea, the little girl who tells the old man she's a boy, is disguised as such because the complex is taking fertile girls of all ages back to the compound. I do find it weird though that her brother or the little boy that she's with tries to sell her out for some units. There is a slight action scene that follows where the rebels get ambushed and I've never heard such bad sound effects for sci-fi weapons ever. They make this goofy thumping noise. It's like they forgot to finish the effects during this scene. 18 minutes in, this random kid in the crowd that says, I don't know why, but this scene just made me laugh so much with just how random it is. This Sabertooth Tiger CGI looks pretty bad. So funny how the old man is making this grand speech in front of everybody and the bad guy just boom, shoots him dead. 30 minutes into the film, we finally get introduced to our main character named Barava, who has the weirdest entrance ever. He shows up and lands in this superhero pose as his robot announces him, and we get multiple camera angles. It's just super cheesy. All that for him to lay on the floor and act like he's too lazy to fight them. I don't know if this is supposed to be funny, but it's not. Like, these bad guys are perfectly fine waiting for him to be done talking to his robot friend before he fights them. When we finally do get the action scene, it's just lackluster, slow, and boring. I'm perfectly fine with heroes that joke when they fight like Deadpool, Star-Lord, and even Spider-Man, but this guy just doesn't do it right at all. This fight scene really wasn't good. It's full of bad choreography, sluggish performances, they also don't really explain how he's so strong, holding back a ton of dudes and beating all of them up. This is where we're introduced to the side character, Sum 80. The bad guys in this film are harvesting fertile girls to make a serum called Project K. They have this big device that they use to extract it from them, then tossing them into some furnace. We are later introduced to the Supreme. I'm not sure why they made the Supreme a CGI person. It's not like in Star Wars with Snoke where he looks inhuman. The Supreme just looks like some old dude, but he's just a CGI guy. So the Supreme wants to find a woman that can carry the formula in her womb for 150 days, which they haven't been able to get past 100. To which they conveniently cut to some 80, who reveals she's been pregnant for exactly 150 days. Jumping back to our main character, we get a backstory of Barava on how he grew up and how the guy who raised him was gonna betray him. 
But then they had to ruin the moment with Luke saying, then it cuts to a scene of him going back home because some people broke in and it's just a bunch of people wanting units that he owes them. Until we're introduced to a baddie named Roxy who shows up. I do find it really funny how a guy with a gun just randomly decides to run at her and he gets kicked in the face instead of, I don't know, shooting her. Then Barava and Roxy do this goofy flirty movement with each other that is like super slow and feels like they didn't practice this at all before filming. Roxy is able to get him into the complex finally and I just find it hilarious they find this new Eden looking place and even though they've never seen horses in their life, somehow both of them can ride them. Then of course, the whole scene is accompanied by a song describing what is going on. They also somehow happen to find nice outfits to wear to this huge mansion party that they see off in the distance, which obviously leads us to a dance scene in the film like in typical fashion. If you're gonna do this, at least have it be good music. <laughs> We finally get to see Ash, who's been chilling in some cave, getting old for years, when Rhea stumbles across him. We later see some 80 escaping the compound at some point with the help of the undercover rebel girl. Outside, the rebel friends are waiting, and I don't know why the dude grabs her ear and pulls her back. What does he think this is, a cartoon? No one does that. The next scene is just so silly in my opinion. Some 80 just does some random walk of faith through the fire, not knowing it would kill her or not. Bear in mind you, this is halfway through the movie. Some 80 teams up with the rebels outside that need to bring her to a safe location. They get stopped by a patrol and have to fight back. The problem is there is no tension building in this scene. Even when the rebel girl goes out to take on the patrol ship behind them, it just feels so empty. Like the music or lack thereof does nothing for the scene. Like there's a whole fight scene on the ship with zero music. Later, Brava decides to take the bounty for some 80, which leads him to clash with another bounty hunter. Later, Ash shows up and saves some 80 and takes out a bunch of bad guys, and the VFX during this scene just does not look great. Plus, using an old guy in action is always gonna look cheesy because all they do is just move slowly around while taking enemies out. Barava shows up finally, beats up some complex soldiers before taking on Ash. Barava throws everything he got at him as Ash just kind of walks through it all. This was the only funny part of the fight. The rest was decent and really shows Ash isn't a good fighter, and if he could actually take damage, he would have lost to Barav easily. Then the movie has this weird jump after the battle, with Ash just suddenly being in some 80s group in their car, arriving to the rebel space. Barav then makes a deal with the complex to capture some 80 for them so he can get into the complex. He brings Luke to Shambhala, which is the rebel base, and at first, none of the guards react to him pulling up in his car. Then, all of a sudden, they just swarm him. The direction for this film is honestly horrible. They don't understand how to transition very well from scene to scene. Later, when Barava fights Ash again, it would have been a lot cooler if the choreography was better. He turns his car into a gorilla mech, and it really doesn't last long in the fight scene. <laughs> we then get this big end battle scene between the rebels and the complex as they invade their base. It feels like they took heavy inspiration from Wakanda, either from the Black Panther movie or Infinity War, with them preparing for battle. The last battle scene was honestly lackluster and not really entertaining. It's a lot of chaos and explosions, and it really never focuses on characters other than Barava and Ash's fight. The rebel leader with her little whip that doesn't really last long and not really interesting, and the main villain who isn't intimidating at all. At the end, Barava touches Ash's staff and it turns out that he is the incarnation of Karna, which they don't really explain how. And all of a sudden he gets all these superpowers from the staff and taking out a bunch of complex ships. And honestly, the staff weapon really isn't that cool and his end scene could have been a lot better. The flashback ending scene had such anime dialogue, it was pretty funny. <laughs> 
వాడిని అడ్డుకొని మన రథం కేవలం రెండు అడుగులు వెనక్కి వెళ్ళింది నా అస్త్రానికి తన రథం పది అడుగులు వెనక్కి వెళ్ళింది So apparently this is part 1 which would have been nice to know in the beginning that this wasn't a full story. This film was honestly such a letdown. I love sci-fi and action but they failed to deliver on both aspects with this film. The cinematography was decent at times and it had some cool imagery in a few scenes but that's about it. I've seen some Indian movies have good to decent fight choreography but this was just painful to watch for the most part. Like it felt like I was watching an old Power Rangers episode. Only bits of the action were serviceable but that's about it. The sci-fi tech is really ugly in this, the sound effects were unfinished for the weapons and the props just looked lazily put together. This world also seems just fake. The sets look cheap like they're from some stage age play or an obvious green screen. None of the characters I really liked and the acting for the most part was very meh. Barov could have been a great character but they just didn't write him as likable or really funny. He has the making of a character that I should really liked but their just execution was poor. Most of the characters you don't really know their names or they aren't on screen long enough for you to care. The villains are so standard and boring, the soldiers and goons are nothing great and pretty basic. The main three villains also have nothing interesting about them. The writing is all over the place, full of cheesy dialogue and not fleshed out characters. They didn't make me really care about anyone. The direction for this film was also horrible. So many scenes made no sense with the direction they took it. The soundtrack wasn't great either, which is surprising for an Indian film. There were also moments that had zero sounds that really needed some music to enhance the visuals. Sure, there are some things I didn't understand from a religious perspective, but that doesn't take away from how many faults this film had. There aren't many positives to this film, and that's why I give Kalki 2898 AD a 4.5 out of 10. If you guys like this review, hit that like button. If you guys want to see more, hit that follow button. And as always, thanks for watching.